Well, I still love y'all. He's mad at some of you to post videos. Anybody take videos? Anybody want to? No? Okay. Well, I'm going to have you uh, redo it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Who's first time? My second favorite question. Who started watching this show within two years ago? I love that. We're getting stronger. We're getting, we're getting momentum. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to... I'm not, I'm not used to being in front of my phone. Mine doesn't work. Yeah. We can share. Hello, hello, hello. You hear yourself? <laughs> yeah, I can hear me. I can hear you too. Okay. Um. Hey. Uh, how many of you are Canadian? We're sort of like honorary right now. I mean, I've, yeah. spent, I've spent a third of my life. Right? This is Toronto and Montreal and they yeah. all snowy and crazy. Yeah. Did anybody call me Sasta? That's a fake word. Scoop <laughs> jar. <laughs> yeah, moose jar. Uh, yeah, we could be we could be filming with none of that. I'll have none of that. Uh that's it. I'll let it get you to watch. It feels like I don't understand what you're saying. Well, cool. Let's uh, let's get to some some questions. I'm sure there's some people. Yes, right there. Um, um, okay, never mind. <laughs> She's opening up her phone. <laughs> She's like, oh me? Oh, I'm just gonna make a phone call. She, she... <laughs> hey, mom. Yeah. 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 He, yeah. He pick me first. I'll be on the. <laughs> okay, I'm leaving. You will be on the phone. Oh, I was just that volcano because I like mountains and that volcano. <laughs> <laughs> so I was wondering where that quote came from. That, so... So that... I got it, sorry. I don't know if you can't handle it. You'll never finish it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you gave out fan chats and it's where you like some more. I always like more fan chats. <laughs> um, but the quote, so Clip Hole is, is a satirical uh, website. And none of the articles they do are true. They just make fun of celebrities and stuff. And so I saw it, and it made me laugh. Because the picture also is one of the pictures where I'm like, <laughs> it looks like something I would have said. So I never actually said it. And I, I, I indeed did not go to college. Uh, but I thought, what was the quote? It was, like the same, like, it was like, quotes from the stars. And my quote was, volcanoes are like mountains. Volcanoes. <laughs> Total Keanu Reeves moment. And mainly it's like it's like an epiphany too. It's like, oh, volcanoes are like mountains. That are volcanoes. You yeah, know, I get it. Eureka. Jared, tell us about your aha moment. Volcanoes are like mountains. All right. Thank you for the question. Did you do something? Just the other one. You've got a lot of voice. Hi, yeah, I don't need one. Why y'all? Um, after last night's performance, I've never seen you perform live like that, Jeff, so that was amazing. Woo! 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 Oh, just bum their songs? <laughs> Sorry, Bob, uh, guys. I'm gonna take your songs now. They can help you write them. They can help you write them. Uh, yeah, you know, that's... I, I will say that it was, uh, it, that is... I kind of blacked out. I'm not quite sure what happened up here last night. Uh, uh, same 
I do know that I walked backstage afterwards and went like, what just happened? That was quite an adrenaline rush. Um, and I was actually talking to somebody and I'm like, now I get why that is the number one job, I think, on the, uh, in the world is to be a rock star. Um, That's how people do it until they're like 70. What's Mick Jagger, 93? Exactly. Yeah, it's not, it's not like he can't retire. Um, it's hard up. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah, but uh, you know, I've, I've been asked that question, you know, to, to do music, and again, I, I say I'm, I, you know, I'm not a musician. I just like music, and if I can surround myself with musically talented people, and it just is a lot of fun for me. Um, I, I'll, I won't say that I, that'll never happen, but I don't know if, if it'll happen anytime soon. Also, Jared, I didn't forget you. That's okay. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the enforcement rules. I don't know what that means. <laughs> more than one. Uh, I, I saw someone, just like, I saw a little shake jumping. I thought it was cute. <laughs> is that a human being or is that a trick of the eye? Does it look like an airplane's coming at us? <laughs> is there a airplane? Hi, Flynn. Uh, I have a question for both of you. Um, in Yellow Fever, how many mistakes did you guys have to do I remember Phil was directing that episode, and he, and I did one thing, obviously not nearly as corny as they ended up with, and he said, listen, I want you to just scream as loud and as long as you possibly can, and don't worry, I can always, for a long time. don't worry, I can always save it and then it ain't I don't know why I decided to trust him that day, but, um, uh, so I think they still did let them put it out. They did? Oh, yeah. Hey, look, don't threaten me with, you know, a good time. I will. I, I will keep chasing you around. <laughs> it went on so long, but I was like, okay, well, he's just gonna keep going. I'm gonna relax. And then Ackles comes up and, like, jumps on me. Like, ah! Um, so we did it, I don't know, maybe we did it, like, two, maybe three times, and then I finally told Phil, I was like, listen, we got the, the scene in that episode where, uh, uh, you know who goes there? Crazy people! That whole, uh, that was the, that we actually shot that scene directly after the cat scare scene. And I knew that there was a lot of dialogue in that scene, and I told Phil, listen, if I keep going with this cat scream today, I'm not gonna have a voice to, to speak in this next scene, so we ended up not doing too many takes on here. But, uh, like, that's cool. He's like, yeah, that's fine. I'd rather get this and just save that for the day. <laughs> um, but, uh, love yeah. And the irony of that episode is the only person who actually got scared during the film of that episode was me. <laughs> we felt like, the snake come out. <laughs> it was a big snake. And the guy, and I was like, man, the guy is laying on his back behind the couch with this mat with 15 or something like hundreds of pounds. It was, uh, I think it was, it was like a 180 pounds. 180 pounds. He's like, trying to push that snake over. And I'm like, he's gonna piss that snake off. That's actually, I'm having it. <laughs> well, the snake, the snake didn't want it. it. It wasn't going, and so this snake wrangler, true drop, real drop, <laughs> was like, hunting. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's good. Anchor it up and then sink it over here. I'm not kidding. The snake was like not wanting to crawl over the couch. It wanted to just go down to the floor. And he kept like pushing it, yeah. shoving it. I, I look over the couch and this guy is like, I mean, it was yeah, it was like wrestling a snake, just trying to get it to come over to me. And, uh, and so I just remember at that, that, that one point when the snake finally did decide to come over my shoulder. And I looked, and it looked, it was, the head's bigger than my fist. Oh, yeah. oh, it's <laughs> Meanwhile, Jared's like six feet away at the, the, the other end of the couch, and he just goes, yeah. It's on me, and he's the one running out of the room. I'm not gonna die for a shot I'm not even in. I'm gonna die and see you on camera. I think. Uh, yeah. Oh, you have a voice. You're gonna need to find Is that new to last night or two nights ago? And last weekend. And, and last, right on. 
Yeah. So it's been like a whole week in progress. It's been two weeks. I'm a, I'm actually shocked that I'm alive right now. Okay. <laughs> um, so I travel for a living, and I know that you guys don't get a lot of time by yourselves to do whatever you want. So give me the opportunity. Where would you go on a road trip? On a road trip? Um, I would actually love to go, and I've talked about this for a long time, I would love to go uh, to Montana or North Montana, mainly. Uh, so no, that area of the Rockies, like Fan, and the pictures I've seen. Uh, I was a train that does it as well. Yeah, so I would love to kind of go on a road trip through the mountains. It's fun because I think I would do a lot of road trips when I was um, between Gilmore Girls and San Antonio. I would drive back and forth I-10 in America and it's flat. And so you just kind of zone out and when you're kind of driving in the mountains, it forces you to slow down because you're not going to go 80 miles an hour around a near mid turn. You might, I'm not going to. <laughs> so it forces you to slow down and really see the scenery and really take the time. So I think I'd probably be driving through the mountains. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good uh, option. I still my answer. Um, I really like the southern Oregon coast, the northern California coast. Yes. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the redwoods and uh, yes. that's that. We used to we used to drive up and back down every year uh, for uh, for the season. We drive up uh, in you know the beginning of July uh, and then we drive down mid April of the season and and a few times uh, a few times we actually drove our own cars but we went together like caravan down the, it was a convoy, I'm not gonna lie. Remember the wall we had a long time. And purely just for the novelty of walking talkies, we had cell phones at the time. I had cell phones on my head and I hear what's your twenty? I'm still like right behind you. <laughs> well, we were, we were, you know, we were driving by ourselves, so it was just, instead of, you know, instead of having to have the cell phone on and rack up the minutes, we literally just had walk time, so just keep, keep each other coming. We're like, hey, are you hungry yet? You want to pull over? No, I'm good. All right, let's go for another two miles. <laughs> you want to pull over? Over. Uh, over. Just <laughs> What'd you do with it? Sound? <laughs> I don't have to do the sound at our customs. Echo Fox Rock, minor. But a couple of times, uh, I don't know if I don't know if we did it. Uh, yeah, I know I did once or twice when I was driving up down. I did that, uh, I hooked it over to the coast and, just, and drove that southern Oregon to the California coast, and it's incredible. Um, so I don't know. I know that, that one's good. I wouldn't want to do that one again. Did you stop in Santa Cruz again? In Santa Cruz? Uh, probably. I mean, it's where you fall ten chairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I know I've been there, so I, I, assume, I assume I stopped there. Thanks. Thank you. That's all right. I got my coffee. I'm good to go. It's mostly for Jared, but um, I wouldn't mind your input too, Jensen. Um, recently, you posted a picture of uh, you wearing Sam's tattoo. So. Um, are we going? To, are we going to get to see that in an episode? Are we going to get to see Sam get uh, it? Or are we going to find no, out why now? Uh, it, it, it was a mega tattoo. I don't actually have. Oh yeah. You take the shirt with salt as well. It's a flashback. Okay. Then I have, can I ask one more question? Because, yes. Why? Don't, don't get me fired. Well, why has Sam not gotten re tattooed? Because he's messing around with strange demons without protection, and that's dangerous for Sam. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's Sam like a moonshot. Sorry, uh, plug your ears for a bit. That was my favorite. I got giddy. I was like, hey, I still kind of do. Uh, 
right here. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. So you guys are adorable and your kids are absolutely adorable as well. And so I'm wondering, how, do they realize what all of this is yet? Like how, how have they come to that consciousness yet? No, not at all. Uh, they just know that I work with Uncle Jensen and Uncle Krivy. Uh, but I don't, I mean, they know they can see me on the screen, but I don't think they realize. Um, like my niece, Juliet, who's born in LA, so she's seven. Uh, she was in like first grade, she was six years old, and I guess one of the teachers was like, Pavlaki? Like, Jared Pavlaki? She goes, yeah, that's my uncle. And like, it finally occurred to her that I was on TV. I know uh, every now and again, we're exhausted, we we'll hand like an iPad over to one of the kids. We're I mean, like, here, watch Dinosaur Train. Or, like, watch, you know, <laughs> whatever, Wild Crats. Uh, I'm like, plugging all these shows. <laughs> I have no financial affiliation with any of those. And I guess, it, you watch YouTube, there's a screen where you can push things, and I guess there was a picture of me, and so he pushed it, and it was a scene like where Sam was getting beat up by somebody. Oh. I know, and it took, it, I wasn't there, but it took Jen a second to understand what was going on, and she looked over, and he looked over, and she's like, what are you watching? And she grabbed it, and I was like, buddy. And, oh. and he goes, the man hurt daddy. <laughs> and so I'm on set, like, and I film it, and I get back to my phone, and I have like six minutes of text messages, like, you can, hey, call me, FaceTime me as soon as you can. You have, and I was like, oh my god, what's going on? And so she, she wanted me to like, talk to Tom and be like, let's just pretend, but look, I'm all fine. I think I'm oh, and then also FaceTiming. So Sam gets injured a little bit in the beginning of the season. Uh, what are we doing? Uh, and so I was FaceTiming, because I'd, you know, I'd be at work before the kids woke up, and I'd get home after they went to bed, so I'd FaceTime with them. But I can't like wash my makeup off to FaceTime to get the makeup off to film. So I had to keep on explaining, like, hey, kid, look, it's just, it's just not real, it's fake. Uh, it's really cute, but they, they mine certainly do No, she's, yeah, she, she, she doesn't, she'll see me, like, if there was a commercial or a show I was being on TV, you know, for the channels. Um, like Danielle said the other day, I happened to pop up, it was a commercial, and she just goes, Oh, hey, there's Daddy. <laughs> And then she just goes right back to bed. <laughs> so, yeah. My kids want me to like, turn it off and put Isaac on. Oh, there's Daddy. Put Isaac back on. Yeah. There's Daddy. There's Daddy. Can we watch planes? <laughs> yes, first row. Yeah. Okay, so my question kind of goes along with hers. Um, your children are adorable. <laughs> Thank you. Um, how do you guys balance your time between work with almost the and your children? I delicately, delicately. It's really difficult. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. A lot of, um, a lot of my kind of anxieties and stuff are from trying to balance everything. I've, I've had to kind of force myself to stop trying to multitask. Uh, like when I'm on set. I'm there with you, you know what I mean? I love them, I'm there with my crew, I'm there with my fellow actors, but I'm, like, it's, it's difficult to try and be a daddy and a husband and a friend and a brother and a son and a father while working, and I, I, I think he and I still have the same dedication to Sam and Dean Winchester that we did before wives and kids happen, and so when I'm at work, I'm, I'm, I don't wanna say work, when I'm acting, when I'm Sam Winchester, I'm Sam Effie Winchester, right? <laughs> You're in work mode. I'm in work mode, and conversely, when I go home, Sam is out the window, you know, and I'm dad, I'm husband, I'm friend, we're out to the um, So I just have to convince myself to uh, stop trying to multi this all the time. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. Um, so both of our families have actually been up here with us for the past month, uh, just because it's so damn hot in Texas. And it's awesome here right now. So, uh, <clears throat> so they've been here for a while, but um, uh, it, that he actually mentioned the other day, this is during the week, and you know, filming 12 hours a day, coming home, going right to bed, waking up the next morning, going right back to work. There's not a whole lot of time uh, during the week when we're filming to kind of get into dad mode or husband mode. Or, so, uh, so she she kind of said, "You've been really distant the past like couple days," and this was like on a Thursday or something. And I realized that like throughout the week, I kind of stay in work mode. Uh, because I'm thinking about, okay, what do I have to do tomorrow? I've got these scenes, I've got uh, work, you know, we're shooting.
shooting out this location, that means it's going to be a tight turnaround because we're you know, traveling an hour, that's two hours of travel. And that's a big thing, dialogues, so I'm going to pre-learn the scenes. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to see, start, you know, figuring out, what am I going to, you know, what am I going to do this, what am I going to do that, um, and I just, I kind of keep, keep that workload throughout the week, and then usually when he and I would travel home on the weekends to Texas, I leave all that up here. And I'm able to just compartmentalize that and keep it up here. When I arrive in Texas, it's like, ah, dad. And I read somewhere, he and I both also have dogs, and I had dogs before kids. And I read somewhere, this is before, I think I was like reading how to socialize a dog with a baby and this and that. And they said something to the effect, and whoever was writing this was just try and spend like 10 to 15 quality minutes with your dog every day. Even if you're around your dogs 24 7, they're next to you. It's different being next to you and having a, a connection. And so I really try to focus on being in the here and now. If I'm at work, or if I'm with my dogs, or if I'm with my family. You know, if I'm if the kids are busy and I get five minutes, even in the same room with my wife and kids, if I get five minutes to focus on Jen and I and what's going on, as opposed to kind of constantly being aware of everything around. I feel like it because I, I get this too. I get the same commitment. Luckily we have patient wives who, who get it and they're not like how dare you they get their actresses. So they end up they're like, hey, you're in work mode. Like, remember the Jesus thing. Yeah, I'd like to deal with the mom. She'll be like, hey, hey, pay attention to her. Yeah. And she'll say that just, you know, lovingly. And I'll be like, oh my gosh, of course, yes. I'll stop what I'm doing and pay attention to my daughter. She's growing at an incredible rate. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss things if I don't pay attention. So it is it is a very delicate thing that, uh, that he and I will help each other out with. You know, we, we try to support each other. And, and, in balancing that uh, that family work life. Yeah. Like, uh, when it's a weekend and he's calling me incessantly, I, I do my favor and don't answer. He's <laughs> <laughs> <It's> my calls. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thanks for that. That's, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for acknowledging also because it is a, it is a big crazy vibe. I see a standard. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm oh, like sure. Yeah, right on. Welcome. It oh. is really hot as hell at home. Yeah. <laughs> and this is really nice. Isn't it nice? I love it. I'm like, can I just stay here until the summer's over? <laughs> That's basically what our wives are doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're not here to see us. They're here for, uh, for the free air conditioning. <laughs> you don't even need air conditioning. That's what I'm saying. It's just nature's air nature's air conditioning. That's all we do at home. Walk from one AC to another. Um, my question is, uh, well, I just wanted to thank you for bringing attention to uh, mental illness and uh, depression. Uh, I have severe depression and anxiety disorder. Sorry. And, um... Oh, you apologize. A lot of Thank my you friends, sure. a lot of my friends and family don't really know. And just the fact that you came out and said that means a lot. And, um, thank you for doing that. And. The attitudes in reverse that you have as well. Thank you for that too, because it's not just women in general that feel that way. It's a lot of people have these poor attitudes about social stigmas and everything. And I just want to thank y'all for bringing attention to that. And um, what other causes do you want to participate in in the future or bring light to in the future? Yeah, that's a great question. First off, thank you for sharing. Uh, yeah. We're family here now, uh, we're all family here, we all have to back. Uh, I, it's a really neat, I mean I don't know the right word for it, but it's a really amazing, fantastic, awesome opportunity to get to a place where you can really affect change, you know, when I think he and I have kind of grown with each other, you know, we were successful actors before the show started, but now we've really got this voice working, we're growing and learning as, as husbands and fathers and friends and everything. And so he and I are in a place where our, our eyes and ears are open and um, that's one of the reasons we started the foundation. It's to kind of as different causes and different things reveal themselves that we might not be aware of yet, but we can help kind of get them up and going and up and running and help them however we can. Um, but I think the real help is this. It's sharing because if anybody says they've never gone through something, then they're either lying or they're one day old, you know. Um, in that case, they shouldn't be talking. 
I think you're really strange. Uh, so yeah, just sharing being open-minded and having the and having the forgiveness for those that don't understand what you're going through that they don't have for you and for for me. You know, so I try to remind myself if somebody doesn't really uh, empathize or understand, and I want to be like. You know, I want, I want to tell myself, like, no, give them the forgiveness that you're hoping to get from them, or the understanding. You know, the understanding, they, don't, they just don't know yet. That's fine. They'll have every chance to learn and grow as we ourselves uh, can learn and grow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 